Hello, my most amazing artist. So we are going to start our donut project. And we started this last week in class, but I want you guys to have a little bit more time with your singing portraits. So I'm going to give you a cub, the both days project kind of in one. I think that might be a little bit easier. So you might be a project behind us for a little bit and that's okay. So you're going to get your donut project today. So we're going to draw a donut. So you need to have some white drawing paper. Actually, you need two pieces of white drawing paper. I can leave all this stuff in the office for you to pick up, or you can just kind of source what you have at home. Um, so you need two pieces of white drawing paper. You need your pencil. You'll need some Sharpie. You'll also need some crayons. And now my camera is going to move because I was sitting on the ground. So you'll need some box of crayons. And there's a couple other things we're going to use for this project. We're going to use, I found these paper doilies. Or you can use a small paper plate that you cut in half. We'll get to that in a second. And then in class, we're using these texture plates that have fun texture on it. You could go on a texture hunt in your house and kind of rub, like if you have a brick house, you could rub crayon over, put your paper on top of the brick and rub your crayon over the brick and get a cool texture. Or if you have different kind of textures, you can find that way. So you can really get creative with this, or I'm happy to leave things in the front office for you to pick up as well. But for starters, we're making our donut and you need a pencil. So when we're eating donuts, and we might have brought in donuts this week for class. I think I'm bringing them to surprise. We have to do some research when we do our donuts. Um, we were talking about the pop artist Wayne Tebold. He was really famous in the 1950s and 60s for doing like diner food. He drew paintings of cakes and cupcakes and all kinds of delicious desserts because pop art is popular culture. In the 50s, the diners were the real new big thing, going to get food that's already made for you. It was pretty cool. So Wayne Tebow loved good diner food and I love a good donut. Um, so we're gonna do some donuts, but we're not doing a donut facing straight down. We're gonna take our donut and turn it so it kind of looks like it's on the plate. And that's where the other things come into play. So we wanna to remember to have an eraser handy, draw light until you like the way your donut looks, and then you can always make it darker. Um, I always think drawing light is the best way to go. Draw light until you get it right. But I'm gonna draw a little heavier so you can see it on the camera, but feel free to sketch lightly on this. That way if you make an oops, you can erase it really easy. Remember, we also have learned in the past how to draw with eraser crumbs. You can do that too. So if you're having a donut, do you want a small donut or do you want a big donut? You want a big donut, right? So no tiny donuts. You have this nice big paper. Mine's nine by 12. You could do this with printer paper, which is eight and a half by 11, and that's fine too. Keep it going horizontal. We want it longer than it is tall. And we're going to start by making kind of a squished oval, kind of like a potato shape, okay? And I want it kind of big. So you can start by drawing with your eraser to get that squished shape you like. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect because all donuts are handmade usually, so they're not going to be perfect. So once you get the shape you kind of like, kind of looks like a potato, you can go over and trace those eraser crumbs. That's a really great trick. Or if you know you're pretty good at drawing squished ovals or potatoes, you can just go for it too. Either one. So once you have it, wipe away the eraser crumbs. We don't need them anymore. So mine is not even, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. The next thing we want to do is kind of find the center of our donut, and we're going to draw a little happy face. So our donut is very excited. It's very happy. Looks like it's smiling at us. Then we're gonna kind of go from the inside, so I'm leaving a little bit of space, and I'm gonna make a sad face. And it kind of turns our donut and turns it on its side, so we're looking into the donut hole, okay? And this can be more shallow if you want it, or it can be higher, it's up to you. Mine's a little high, so I might erase that a little bit, but that's just me being picky. So it kind of, right now it looks like a bagel. And we don't want to, I mean, bagels are delicious. We don't want to draw bagels, we want a donut. So what makes a donut super delicious is the frosting. So we are gonna use a wavy line to look like the frosting is kind of dripping. And we're only gonna do this wavy line on one side. So I'm gonna draw my wavy line and you can make it as wavy as you want. And now it looks like my frosting is kind of got dripped and turned over. 
Now we also want to add a little wavy line back here above the sad face. So it looks like our icing is dripping down into our hole. So now we went from having a bagel to a donut. So now everybody's favorite part of donuts is usually the sprinkles. So if you want to add sprinkles, you totally can. The rule I told your classmates is you can't just dot on things. If you want sprinkles, you actually have to draw the little shapes. You can draw little ovals. You can draw little rectangles. I know Liam had a lot of fun drawing some heart sprinkles. Whatever kind of sprinkles you want, you can draw them. The one thing about sprinkles, though, you want them to be facing different directions. So I'm going to use a couple different shapes to add my sprinkles, going in different directions and really just kind of sprinkling them around. Okay, you can add as many or as little sprinkles as you want. It's totally artist choice. I'm gonna add one down here. All right, so once you're like, yeah, that looks pretty good, I'm happy with my donut, you're ready to outline a little bit. We're gonna outline a little different today, a little bit different. So if you need more practice, you can use both sides of your paper until you get the donut that you like. Once you like your donut, we're gonna outline our frosting. Being careful to go over that pencil line. I'm gonna outline my smile and my sad face and my drips over here. And that's all I'm gonna outline. If you really wanna outline the outside edge, you can, but when we cut these out, you're probably gonna cut that line off anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's up to you. You can go ahead and outline all of it. I might outline all of this one just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Plus, I wanna make my donut a little thicker down here. But again, you don't have to outline the outside edge of your donut unless you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Don't worry about outlining your sprinkles. We can do that later. So if you are like me and you can see your pencil line through your Sharpie, go ahead and erase any pencil line you see coming over your Sharpie and you're ready to add color. So we're gonna use crayon to color our donut and you're gonna need kind of a donut color which could be either a skin color or a brown or whatever. I'm gonna use brown a brown donut, and then you can color whatever color frosting you would like for your donut. I think I'm gonna have like pink frosting on my donut. I think I'm gonna do that. But again, you can do whatever you want. Your sprinkles, I told our friends in class, the sprinkles you can color in marker. So if you wanna use marker to color your sprinkles, you can do that too. Again, it's up to you. And you can color your sprinkles all the same color or all different colors. The main thing about when we're coloring is I want nice, dark, waxy, shiny coloring. I want to almost look like we painted it because we want it to look nice and sharp. We're using our crayons to really make a nice color. So we want nice and dark. What I don't want to see is this. We don't want this. We want this, even with our frosting. So this takes time and it took your class a good chunk of the day to color their donut. And that is perfectly fine. Good coloring takes time. And if it's something we need to practice to get better on, that's even better. So we wanna make sure we color our whole donut. Don't forget to color your donut inside here too, because remember my donut is still under here. We're trying to get that illusion of space in 3D. So this little bit is my donut too. If you want to mix colors for your frosting, you totally can. Again, it's up to you. And if you didn't have any sprinkles, you don't have to color sprinkles. And if you don't want to color your sprinkles with marker, you don't have to. We decided the marker, we liked how it stood out in class. But again, it's artist choice. You can use your crayons or you can use marker just for your sprinkles. The frosting and the actual donut, I want to be crayon. So we want nice and smooth, hardly any white showing through really go over it a couple times so it looks nice really clean all right so i'm going to finish coloring my frosting i'm not going to make you guys watch me color my frosting but again we want nice rich coloring not scribbles okay 
So I'm going to pause this, I'm going to color, and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so we're going to come back, and once your donut is completely covered, just make sure you go over all of it so you don't have any like big white spaces. We want really smooth. It should be almost shiny, very waxy. It just looks really rich like donut, like frosting, like I want to eat this. Rum, rum, rum. So after you have it all set, you're going to carefully cut out your donut. Remember, scissors stay still and you turn your paper with the non-scissor hand, no chicken wings, all right? So you're cutting out your donut. You don't have to worry about cutting the inside donut hole. If you outlined in Sharpie, you can cut right on that. If it stays, great. If it doesn't, not a big deal. Some kids and friends in class didn't even outline this edge. It just gives it a nice border if you like it. But I don't want to see any white paper. So either cut on the Sharpie line or just inside of it, because we don't want to have any white pieces hanging out. That'll kind of ruin our illusion. So once it's carefully cut out, it looks good, it looks delicious. That scrap paper we can recycle. Don't worry about the inside, we're gonna leave it there. It's gonna kind of look like it's on our white plate and that's gonna be fine. So move this over to the side. Your donut is done. Next, you need another piece of white paper. The same size as your donut paper. We're using nine by 12 in class. It's a little thicker drawing paper. Use what you have. And then we're gonna take our edges and we're gonna fold it in half over the horizon, so on horizontally. So we're gonna do a nice sharp crease. So we have our half. So we wanna do like a wall and a floor. So this is where we talked about those textures. You want to pick two colors you did not use in your donut. So I'm picking a blue, green, and an orange. And yes, I used blue in my sprinkles, but it's not pink, so they'll be fine. So I'm using these two colors. Now, if you want to come to school and pick up a texture plate, the texture plates have two different textures on each end. And it is what it is. Some are flowers, some are stars, some are just geometrics. And if you don't want to come get this, you can go around your house and find something you can put underneath your paper and make a texture. Brick works really cool. If you're careful, maybe your patio or the concrete outside, you could find some really interesting bubble wrap. If you have bubble wrap at home or even cardboard would help you give a texture. Because what we're going to do is you want to have some naked crayons. I know parents don't love it when you peel the paper off your crayons, but we kind of want to do it for this. If you don't have peel paperless crayons, Go ahead and peel a couple little pieces maybe because you want a naked crayon. This will help you do a rubbing. So I'm going to take my texture plate and I'm going to set it underneath my paper. And I'm going to pick whatever color I want on the bottom. I think I want the blue green on the bottom. And I'm just going to rub. So we're only doing half of our paper now. So one color is going to be half. And if you're using something around your house, do the best you can. You can push hard and it comes through. If it gets a little bit on the other side, don't worry about it too much. You wanna kinda of push so it really shows that texture, but you don't wanna color so much you lose the texture. Well, I have to scoop my paper over a little bit, boop, 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 to get more texture on there, and that's okay. It doesn't matter if you rub vertically or horizontally, you're still gonna get that texture. So we're going to do one color on the bottom, like that, and then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do a different color on the top. So you need to find at least two textures in your house. If you can't, do the best you can. I'm going to do a different color. Some colors are going to show up better than others. Yellow might be hard to see a texture. But try it, and if you don't like it, you can always get a new piece of paper or just make it work. Sometimes experimenting really helps us learn what we like and what we don't like. So I'm going to move my stencil over, and I'm really just getting that texture in there. I'm going a little fast, but I want you guys to take your time because I want that texture to be really dark. Shows up really cool. Like this one in the middle didn't really work. All right. When you're done... My crayons are going all over. You have this really cool effect. Some texture in the background and different than the top and the bottom. 
Then we're using these big paper doilies. It's about the size of a medium paper plate. So if you have a paper plate at home, you could take your paper plate and cut it in half horizontally. We just want it to be able to fit on our line. So I'm gonna fold this in half. And I'm gonna cut it carefully. And if you have a paper plate, you wanna cut a paper plate in half. And if you, you have small paper plates, that works too, whatever you have at home. Worst case, you can cut out a circle, a half circle, and make your own. So I cut this little lace thing in half, and I want it to be on my paper. And I know it's kind of hard to see because my contrast is there, but it looks like my wall kind of goes up, and that's okay. I can cut some more off if I want to, or just leave it. I don't want it to dangle too much. A little bit off is kind of pretty. So what you do once you get your paper plate set, you want to be in the width of your paper. It can dangle off a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. You're gonna glue it with some glue stick. So I'm gonna just glue stick down. I know it looks purple and scary. If you use liquid glue with this, it might bleed through and it doesn't look as pretty. But purple, I know it looks shocking when it's purple. And it kind of went through my thing, my uh, lace, and that's okay. So we're gonna lay this down. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna give it a back rub. We really want that kind of put down. I can still see the purple through it, but I know once it dries, the purple's gonna go away. Then you're gonna take your donut and you're gonna lay your donut on your plate. And you can decide if your donut's up high or down low. Some of your friends had time in class to draw two donuts. They might have two donuts on your plate. That might look really cool. Um, it's up to you. So if you have one donut, that's perfect. If you wanna draw another donut and you can have a stack of donuts on your plate, I think that'd be really awesome. Again, I'm gonna leave that to you. So once you decide where your donut lives, you're going to take your glue stick again and you're going to add glue to your donut. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have done a darker color underneath my lace, but that's okay. So that's my top. Make sure your top of your donut makes sense. Remember, the icing should be going down. I'm going to rub it and then once again, flip it over, give it a good back rub. Even donuts like a good massage. And ta-da! We have our donut on a plate. We're using textures, we're different donuts, and we're doing different mediums. So I love this project. I think it'd be really cool if you could stack up donuts. So I'm gonna leave it up to you. Do you wanna do one donut or two? In class, I'm challenging them to do two, but you can figure out at least one or two, or maybe even a little donut hole. Up to you. So I can't wait to see your donut projects. If you need me to leave anything inside the office for you to come pick up, let me know. Otherwise, get creative with what you have at home and see what you can find. I can't wait to see your donuts and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye, my most amazing artists.